This is the One Piece Iceberg. It's split into seven parts and made up of 37 theories in total. The first stage consists of mostly mainstream popular theories you've probably heard of before, but as we go further through the stages, the theories will start to get progressively weirder until they become straight up insane. And let's start with a really well-known one. Blackbeard has multiple personalities theory. Aside from being one of the most hated characters, Marshall D. Teach, aka Blackbeard, is also well known for his cunningness, ruthlessness, and cowardice, which is a pretty weird combination of traits for one person to have. He's also the only person in the story to have the power of two devil fruits, Yami Yami no Mi and Gura Gura no Mi. It's common knowledge that anyone who eats two devil fruits dies, which brings us to the question, how is this possible? It has been pretty heavily theorized by fans that Blackbeard has more than one personality within him, which would explain some of his weird behavior. Also, it's important to mention that he never sleeps, possibly because one of his personalities is always awake. And lastly, during Jaya, both Zoro and Luffy referred to him as they and not he, which just further proves that he may be more than one person. A new straw hat. Near the beginning of the story, Luffy mentioned that he wanted 10 crewmates on his ship. Currently, there are only nine straw hats, excluding Luffy, which means that it's very likely we'll get to see another crewmate before the story ends. There are a lot of speculations about who the last straw hat may be. The most obvious choice would be Vivi, the princess of the Alabasta Kingdom. Another potential member is Yamato. However, considering he decided to stay in Wano after the battle, I think it's unlikely he'll be joining the crew. Some other candidates are Bartholomew, Bonnie, Carrot, or maybe even a new character we don't know yet. The Crocodile Theory This next theory is the one that's had the One Piece fandom in a chokehold ever since the early One Piece. It's a theory about Crocodile, former warlord of the sea, actually being a woman. If you've never heard this theory before, your first reaction is probably, wait, what? But bear with me. During the Impel Down arc, before Crocodile was released from his cell by Luffy, Ivankov threatened to spill his darkest secret if he decided to betray them. Now, we all know that the Okama Queen has devil fruit powers that can alter a person's body, including their sex. This made One Piece fans speculate that, at some point, Ivankov had transformed Crocodile from female to male. Now, believe it or not, there are actually some hints to this theory in the newly released One Piece live action. During Roger's execution, we can clearly see a bunch of important people in the crowd, such as Dragon, Shanks, and Mihawk. However, there's one unknown female in the crowd that got a lot of attention in this scene for some reason. Since we know that Crocodile was there in Lokedown during Roger's execution, a lot of people think that this woman is actually Crocodile. I don't know about you guys, but I can definitely see some resemblance. Before we continue down the iceberg, I want to let you guys know that this video has a special sponsor you'll absolutely love, Zen Market. If you're anything like me, you probably love collecting anime figures. However, in most of the world, these things aren't easy to get, especially the newly released ones. But that's where Zen Market comes in. It's a service that allows you to buy stuff directly from Japan and ship them to your doorstep. Whether you want to buy anime merch, manga volumes, or maybe even some Pokemon cards, you'll find exactly what you're looking for. As Zen Market allows you to order from over 10,000 Japanese stores. For example, check out this cool Shanks figure I found on Japanese Amazon. Zen Market can buy it for me and ship it globally for only a little over 30 bucks. Wait, this is actually a pretty good deal. Let me just order this real quick. There we go. Currently, there's a sale going on in the Rakuma store, and if you order anything from there, you'll get 7% cash back on whatever you spend. If you ever wanted to order something from Japan, now is probably the best time. And since you're a loyal viewer of the channel, you can also use the special promo code Jaegerists to get 739 yen off the international shipping fee. What are you waiting for? Click the link in the description and order some of these amazing things now. The Final War It's been hinted multiple times throughout the series that the One Piece story will end with one huge war. This war was first mentioned by Whitebeard when he said that the world government feared the immense battle that would come one day. This was later confirmed by the narrator during Dressrosa when he said that Luffy's fleet would cause an incident that would go down in history. This final war will most likely be an all-out battle against the world government, with every important pirate throughout the world participating. According to Oda, the creator of One Piece, the final war will make the Marine Ford War look like child's play in comparison. Dragon has a weather manipulation devil fruit power. Even in the early One Piece, Dragon, the leader of the Revolutionary Army, has always been associated with weather. For example, when he first appeared at Loketown, it rained heavily, the gunpowder had been soaked so the soldiers couldn't fire their guns, and even a windstorm blew some of them away. Also, when Buggy tried to execute Luffy, the podium was struck by lightning, conveniently saving Luffy at the last moment. Besides this, there was also instances where Dragon slightly levitated in the air while wind was seen beneath him. Although we don't know the exact devil fruit power Dragon has, most fans can agree that it's most likely some kind of weather paramecia. However, if you want to get more creative about it, it's also possible that Dragon has a mythical Zoan fruit model, Shenlong. 
Shenlong is a dragon from Chinese mythology that's known as the Master of Rain. The meaning of D. One of the most mysterious things in the entire show is the initial D. The leading theory so far is that D stands for Dawn and that those who have D in their names would bring about a new Dawn in the world. There's actually a lot of hints as to why this may be true. First of all, the first arc in the series is called Romance Dawn. The word Dawn has also been mentioned by Minx when they spoke of the one who would bring about a new Dawn. Toki also mentions a new Dawn in her prophecies, same as the samurai when boss Hyogoro mentions Wano seeing a new Dawn after Kaido is defeated. Now to elaborate on this theory even more, a lot of fans believe the D also represents the members of Joy Boy's crew, the Dawn Pirates. During the Void Century, they all took up the name D as a symbol of their loyalty and friendship, and as a result, their descendants carried the name D. This ties pretty well with recent developments in the manga where Inu stated that D is an initial carried by their ancient enemies, which in this case could be the Dawn Pirates. And with that, the first stage of the iceberg is finished. The theories up ahead are still pretty well known, but there may be some you didn't know about. Luffy will die at the end of One Piece. As the protagonist of the story, it's widely believed that after everything comes to an end, Luffy will achieve everything he wants and live a happy life. Although that's true for the vast majority of anime protagonists, it may not apply to Luffy, as a lot of fans speculate that he'll actually die at the end. You see, throughout the course of the manga, there's been hints about Luffy's reduced lifespan. His devil fruit powers have been known to take a big strain on his body, years two and three in particular. Luffy is constantly pushing his body to the absolute limits, and with each new transformation, it only gets worse and worse. Then there was the time it impelled down when Emporio even Kavi injected Luffy with healing hormones, which resulted in him losing 10 years worth of his lifespan. And not to mention the additional adrenaline shots he received multiple times, even after Ivan warned him of risks to his health. All in all, if Luffy continues going at this pace, it's a real possibility that the story won't end that well for him. Shanks is a celestial dragon. Throughout the show, Shanks has been able to pull off a lot of suspicious things that wouldn't be possible for a normal pirate. For example, even though he's an emperor of the sea, he was somehow granted an audience with five elders. Hmm, something's telling me Kaido or Blackbeard wouldn't be allowed to do that. He was also able to stop the war at Marineford, and the fleet admiral Sengoku even allowed him to take aces in Whitebeard's bodies. Furthermore, it's theorized that Shanks was actually born in God's Valley, and after the battle with rocks, Roger found him and decided to raise him. This would make sense since we know a lot of celestial dragons were on the island during the battle. The timeline also works perfectly here, as the God Valley incident happened 38 years ago, while Shanks is exactly 39 years old. Luffy destroys the red line using One Piece. Even after a thousand plus chapters of the manga, Oda still hasn't revealed to us what the One Piece actually is. However, the theory that it'll somehow help Luffy destroy the red line and unite all the oceans makes just way too much sense. First of all, it would make most of the crew's dreams come true. Since all four seas would be connected, Sanji would find the all blue, Rook would reunite with Laboon, and Nami would be able to draw a map of the entire world. Also, let's not forget that merging all the oceans together and getting rid of this line in the middle will literally make the world be in one piece. This would also make Madame Shirley's prediction of Luffy destroying Fisherman Island come true, as it's located under the red line. Blackbeard's Cerberus Theory We've already discussed a theory about Blackbeard and his three personalities, but now let's take it a step further. What if the reason Blackbeard has these personalities is because he ate a mythical Zoan devil fruit, model Cerberus? In Greek mythology, Cerberus is described as the three-headed dog that guards the gates of the underworld. This would be really fitting for Blackbeard, as he's known to have some kind of connection to the number three. Three skulls on his Jolly Roger, the three-bladed claw he used to slash shanks, his beard being split into three parts, and even three pistols he always carries around. This connection is why a lot of fans believe that Blackbeard also has three different people within him, same as how Cerberus has three heads. Aokiji is a spy. Aokiji has always had a strong sense of justice and always did what he felt was right. This is why when it was revealed post time skip that he became one of the 10 Titanic captains of the Blackbeard Pirates, it came as a shock. Why would he agree to work for Blackbeard? Even though he claimed he had joined them because he wanted to live for himself and be free, when Smoker mentioned his involvement with the underworld, Kuzan reassured him by saying he was still the same person. But how can he be the same person he always was and be in the most evil pirate crew in the world at the same time? It doesn't really make sense. This is why a lot of fans think that Kuzan is actually a spy and has joined the Blackbeard Pirates only to learn what they're planning. But if he's not working for the Blackbeard Pirates, who is he working for? One option could be that he's a sword agent, just like Drake, who infiltrated the Beast Pirates, or he could be working with the Revolution Army, just like Kuma had been while he was a warlord. No matter how you spin it, this guy just doesn't belong in Blackbeard's crew. Usopp and Elbath 
Elbaf was first mentioned during the Little Garden arc when the Straw Hats met Dori and Brogi, the leaders of the giant pirates. Usopp was so inspired by them that he started to dream of one day going to Elbath and meeting the proud warriors there. It's pretty much confirmed that the next destination for the Straw Hats is going to be Elbath, and many fans expect Usopp to play a really important role during this arc. We all know how most of Usopp's lies eventually come true in the end. However, some of the lies that still didn't come true are that he has Conqueror's Hockey and that he'll lead the army of 8,000 soldiers. Well, isn't Elbaf a perfect arc for Usopp to finally achieve these things and become the great warrior of the sea? But how exactly will this happen? One theory is that Hadrujin, a giant we were introduced to in Dressrosa, will tell everyone the story about brave God Usopp, who freed everyone from Doflamingo's control. This story will make giants acknowledge Usopp's bravery and consider him worthy of leading them. Okay, let's kick off the third stage with the weirdest theory so far, the hidden power behind Zoro's left eye. Aside from the evident improvements in his swordsmanship and hockey, during the time skip, Zoro also acquired a big scar on his left eye. The most obvious answer would be that he lost it during his training with Mihawk, but that doesn't sound that interesting, so fans came up with a bunch of theories about Zoro's closed eye. Some fans joked about Zoro keeping his eye closed because of his shotting gun and reining gun, which he acquired after getting lost and ending up in the Hidden Leaf Village. Although this is entirely possible, the other fans have some more grounded theories. Jokes aside, there's speculations that during their training, Mihawk noticed that Zoro's left eye was more dominant than his right eye and instructed him to keep it closed so he could train his weaker eye. So when Zoro eventually opens his left eye, he'll have far superior vision, which will instantly become much stronger. NL's return. After NL's defeat during Skypiea, he went to the moon and pretty much became god there. Some of you may be confused as this was never shown in the anime, but it is actually canon as it's one of the manga cover stories. Anyway, on the moon, NL defeated space pirates and brought back life to an army of robots. He also discovered that the Shandians lived on the moon a long time ago before they traveled to the Earth because of the lack of resources. Oda, the creator of One Piece, is known to constantly bring back old characters, especially the ones featured in cover stories like Wapol, CP9 agents, and Buggy. This has brought forth speculation that NL could return at some point to share his knowledge and may even play a part in revealing things about the Void Sentry. He could even play a part in the final war we talked about before. Shiki visits Crocus. Shiki, the Golden Lion, aka the Flying Pirate, is a former member of Rock's Pirates as well as one of Roger's biggest rivals. Although Shiki is a canon character, he never made an appearance in the anime. However, there's something really interesting to be seen on the cover page of chapter 631. On this panel, we can see that someone is having a friendly chat with Crocus, the former doctor of the Rogers Pirates, who's currently taking care of Laboon near the entrance to the Grand Line. Even though it was never officially confirmed, this mysterious figure looks a lot like Shiki. His hair, his cape, and even the color of his clothes are exactly the same as his. While some argue that this is a foreshadowing that Shiki will eventually return to the main story, others believe it's a way of showing his story has been concluded and he's now enjoying life reconnecting with old acquaintances. Mihawk's Parents Even though we were introduced to Mihawk very early into the show, to this day we know nothing about his origin and parents. However, a lot of fans, me included, believe that Rayleigh and Shaki are his parents. First of all, he physically resembles them a lot. His hair, ears, sideburns, the way his beard is shaped, and even the way he dresses are really similar to them. Also, their age works really well with this theory because if Mihawk is their child, it would mean that they were 34 and 20 when he was born, which is pretty believable. Another important thing to mention is that Mihawk wore a shirt with peonies during Roger's execution. The reason I'm mentioning this is because Shaki's full name, Shakiyaku, literally means peonies in Japanese, which could hint towards the connection between the two. Luffy will get Roger's sickness. The former Pirate King, Goldie Roger, had been suffering from an incurable disease near the end of his career, and even with Crocus's help, he knew he wouldn't live for much longer. Although there's many theories that try to explain how Roger got his illness, it's possible that it's due to him constantly overexerting himself in a similar way to Luffy, having many near-death experiences and often pushing himself to the limits. Now you all know how Roger and Luffy are pretty much the same in many aspects. They even say the exact same words sometimes. This connection between them could mean that Luffy will eventually share the same fate as Roger and get sick when he becomes the Pirate King. Shanks was going to give Gomu Gomu no Mi to Ace. We learned from Who's Who in Wano that Shanks came into possession of the Gomu Gomu no Mi after he attacked the marine vessel transporting it. However, after that, for some reason he didn't do anything with the fruit and instead went to this random village where he spent the majority of his time. Could it be that the real reason Shanks was there was because he was searching for his captain's son Ace? It's possible that Shanks initially stole the Gomu Gomu no Mi because he wanted to give it to Ace so he could find the Laugh Tale and fulfill the dream Roger couldn't. Luffy eating the fruit was never a part of the plan, and that's why Shanks was so surprised about it, but he figured that it must have been fate and let Luffy have it. 
After that, he left Fusha Village and never returned again because his mission was fulfilled. Four more stages of the iceberg are left, and if you knew all the theories so far, you're a real One Piece fan. Congratulations! However, let's see if you can keep up. Oro Jackson Egg At one point during the One Piece film, Strong World, we see something really weird on Roger's ship, a large egg with red dots. Although we never got an explanation as to what this egg actually is, during that specific scene, Shiki mentioned that he wanted to take an apocalyptic weapon Roger had in his possession. Could it be that this mysterious weapon he was talking about is somehow related to this egg? What's even weirder is that Roger's crew was saved by the sudden storm that sunk most of Shiki's fleet. And do you know what's rumored to have the power of sky in heavens? That's right, the ancient weapon Uranus. Even though this is purely speculation, it's possible that Roger found an egg from which Uranus would be born, and its power kept him safe from Shiki's fleet. Luffy's True Dream Everyone knows Luffy's dream is to be free and become the Pirate King. However, recently in the story, we learned that this isn't Luffy's real dream. In Chapter 1000, Ace reveals Luffy's true dream to Yamato, and although we don't hear what it is, his reaction to it is shock and awe, realizing that it's the exact same dream Roger had. It also made him laugh, which was something Ace and Sabo did when he first mentioned it to them as children. We all know that one of the things Luffy likes the most is parties, and he throws one at the end of pretty much every arc. Based on this and his childlike personality, it's entirely possible that his dream would be to throw the world's largest party. This would explain why everyone who's heard his dream laughed, as it's such a ridiculous dream to have. It would also tie in well with One Piece's theme of freedom, as everyone, no matter the race, would be treated equally and have fun together. Devil Fruit users can't go to Laugh Tale. In order to get to the Laugh Tale, someone needs to find and read all road poneglyphs, but even that isn't common knowledge, and very few people know where these stones are located. However, is it possible that there's another reason Laugh Tale is so hard to reach? Could it be that Devil Fruit users are prohibited from entering the final island? The reason I'm saying this is because when the Roger Pirates were heading to Laugh Tale, Buggy and Toki, the only two Devil Fruit users on Roger's ship, got extremely sick. This led to Toki returning to Wano, while Shanks stayed behind with Buggy to nurse him until he got better. That's a pretty weird coincidence, isn't it? Another thing is that in recent chapters, Shanks declared that it's finally time for his pirate crew to claim One Piece. To the best of our knowledge, no member of the Red Hair Pirates has any Devil Fruit abilities. Could it be that the reason Shanks waited for so long to get the One Piece was because he knew that no other crew would ever be able to find it because of their Devil Fruit powers? Luffy's mom is a celestial dragon. Like a lot of characters in One Piece, Luffy's mother is a big mystery, and we have no information regarding her identity. Not once has there been any talk about her. Although there's a lot of theories about Luffy's mom, the most popular one is that she's actually a celestial dragon. There's pretty much nothing backing this theory, but it's possible that she met Dragon while he was on some business related to the Revolutionary Army and fell in love with him. She then wanted to give Luffy a normal life and sent him to live on Fusha Island. Luffy's Final Bounty After every major arc, the Straw Hats are awarded with new bounties. After becoming a Yonko, Luffy's bounty was raised to 3 billion berries, which leads to the question, how high could Luffy's bounty go? I don't know if you knew this, but there's actually a wordplay on the numbers of each Yonko bounty, a sort of pun created by Oda. For example, Big Bomb's bounty is 4,388,000,000. If we take the last two numbers, which are 8, 8, and pronounce them in Japanese, we'll get ha ha, which means mother. The last numbers of Whitebeard's bounty are 4, 6, which can be pronounced as shiro, meaning white in Japanese. For Kaido, it's hyakuju, meaning 100 beasts. And for Shanks and Roger, it's Shiaku and Roshia, referring to their names. Anyway, all these wordplays led to the speculation that Luffy's final bounty at the end of the series will be 5,656,000,000 berries. This is because the numbers 5656 five, six could be pronounced as Gomu Gomu, referring to Luffy's devil fruit. But let's go even deeper than that to the fifth stage and the theory that states that Doflamingo and Gecko Maria will join the Cross Guild. There have been talks recently of Oda playing with the idea of another Impel Down breakout. During this breakout, Doflamingo will escape, and along the way, he'll encounter Crocodile, who would invite him to join the crew. With his knowledge of what secret the world government is trying to hide in his ties to the Underworld, he would be a logical ally for the Cross Guild. Also, Oda recently brought Maria back to the story, and it's likely he'll soon escape from Blackbeard's captivity with Perona. After this, due to Perona's connection to Mihawk, she would convince him to allow Maria to join them. This would be really interesting to see, as it would mean that five former warlords would be on the crew together. The Last Road Poneglyph so far in the story, we've only heard the locations of three road poneglyphs. One is at Zo, one at Whole Cake, and one in Wano. This leads to the question, where is the last one? We know that at one point it was located on Fishman Island, but nobody has seen it since then. Before disbanding his crew, Roger said something to Shanks that we didn't get to hear. Could it be that Roger instructed him to hide the last road poneglyph and await Joy Boy's return? This could also explain why he stole Gomu Gomu no Mi from the world government, as he wanted to make sure that it would end up in the right hands. If we believe this to be the case, the location of the last poneglyph is most likely to be Elbaf, 
This is because the island is Shanks territory and is not affiliated with the world government, which makes it the perfect hiding spot for the fourth road Poneglyph. Kuma will join the Straw Hats. Considering the manga is slowly entering its final stage, it would make sense that anyone joining the Straw Hats is someone we're already familiar with. Kuma has ties with the crew, he had once saved them on Salvadi, and he protected their ship during the two-year time skip, not to mention his connection with Sabo and Dragon. But there's more to this theory. You see, the Straw Hats have four Devil Fruit users, and each of their fruits can relate to the numbers between 1 and 10. Luffy's fruit, Gomu, can be read as 5, 6. Chopper's, Hito, is 1, 10. Robin's, Hana, is 8, 7. And Brook's, Yomi, is 4, 3. This only leaves numbers 2 and 9 missing. So could it be that the new crewmate will have a devil fruit that can be read as 2, 9? Well, it's possible, and Kuma is the perfect candidate as his devil fruit, Nikyu Nikyu no Mi, can be read as 2, 9. Nikyu. The Straw Hats and the Blackbeard Pirates will play Davy Back Fight. The Davy Back fight was first introduced during the Long Ring Long Land arc, and since then, we haven't heard much about it. Robin mentioned the game was invented on Pirate Island, and it served as a way for captains to fight over the best possible sailors for their crew. Now, the interesting thing is that the Blackbeard's base of operations is Hachinosu, which is literally known as Pirate Island. This could mean that when it comes time for Luffy and Blackbeard to fight, they'll do Davy Back fight instead. The Straw Hats will want to take out Kiji, and Blackbeard will want Robin because of her ability to read Poneglyphs. Shaki was a member of the Rocks Pirates. Shakoyaku, Rayleigh's wife and bartender of Shaki's ripoff bar, once said that her pirating career ended around 40 years ago. Although she never stated which pirate crew she was a part of, there's a crew that disbanded almost exactly 40 years ago, the Rocks Pirates. In the Rocks crew, there was this one character called Silver Axe, and although we literally don't know anything about them, I guess it's possible that this character is actually Shaki. One fan brought this up to Oda and he replied, I don't know what you mean, doo 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 doo. Could this mean that there really is something to this theory? Or is Oda just messing with us? Before we cover the final seventh stage with some of the weirdest theories you'll ever hear, let's first go over the sixth stage, which is also packed with pretty weird theories like this one that states that Blackbeard and Luffy will fight together. Except for Rox D. Zedek, all members of the D-Clan are good people who try to help others. Since Blackbeard is also part of the D-Clan, it must mean that he's good too and could even end up fighting alongside Luffy against the world government. The reason he's doing all these evil things now is simply to prepare for that upcoming fight, and he believes that all of the bad things he's done will be justified in the end. Kizaru will betray the Marines. Admiral Kizaru, the user of Pika Pika no Mi, is one of the Navy's strongest fighters and one of the crew's major enemies. However, in the end, there's a chance that he could end up being Luffy's ally. There are a few things backing this theory. The first one is that on Salvadi, it was almost as if he was just toying with the Straw Hats, which ultimately gave Kuma the opportunity to help them escape. Look at how powerful he is. Capturing or killing them would have been child's play for him. So is it possible that he let them go on purpose? Also during the Brainford War, while Luffy was lying on the ground, instead of finishing him off, Kizaru just kicked him toward Whitebeard. Another interesting thing is that his justice is described as unclear, which could mean that he'll end up switching sides in the future. Kuina is alive. Since the introduction of Tashigi and Logetown, fans have been speculating that she is Kuina, Zoro's childhood friend and the person he made a promise to. Although not likely, it's possible that Kuina didn't die like Zoro thought and instead lost her memories after the accident. A good argument for this theory is that Oda rarely kills characters, and the whole fell down the stairs thing seems a bit weird. Even though Oda released a picture of a young Tashigi, which basically disproved the theory, many still believe he did it to hide something and he would reveal it in due time. The Straw Hats will go to the moon. The moon seems to be a really important part of One Piece. It's been mentioned a few times, and it also appears in a lot of important scenes. From NL's cover story we discussed earlier, it's obvious that the moon holds a lot of secrets that are important to the story. So could it be that the One Piece is also located there? Maybe Laugh Tale is just another clue on how to get there. You have to admit that this would be pretty hilarious, and when it would explain why Roger laughed so hard when he reached the final island. And finally, the seventh stage of the iceberg, filled with some of the most absurd theories you ever heard. Ors is Joy Boy. Okay, I know this sounds absolutely ridiculous, but let's go through a few clues that support this theory. Firstly, the giant straw hat Emu was looking at in the Holy Land, Mary Gyosi bears a striking resemblance to Luffy's own straw hat. And considering its size, it looks like it would be a perfect fit for Oars. Also during Thriller Bark, after Maria revived Oars using Luffy's shadow, he claimed that Luffy was a perfect fit for Oars. Since we now know that Luffy is a new Joy Boy, could that be the reason why his shadow was so fitting? And lastly, Oars seemed to like Luffy's straw hat a lot and wanted to wear it. This could be because Luffy's shadow was inside him, but it could also be that he remembered it from a long time ago. Mihawk is Yoru. So what if Mihawk doesn't actually exist and he's only the physical manifestation of the sword, Yoru? 
It was hinted multiple times throughout One Piece that certain devil fruits and swords have souls and personalities of their own. So could it be that Yoru took a physical manifestation in the form of Mihawk in an attempt to find the person worthy enough to wield it? The fact that Mihawk let Zoro live during Barati could also tie in well with this theory, as Yoru has probably seen Zoro's potential and decided to wait and see if he'll become the man worthy of wielding it. It is also said a blade looks into people and chooses the best person who suits it, similar to how Zoro mentioned Enma was testing him. Mihawk, or in this case Yoru, probably looked into Zoro and found him worthy, which is why it acknowledged him and agreed to train him. Rock Pirates are all cloned. We know that Stussy is the clone of Bakin, who is a former member of Rock's Pirates, but what if there's even more clones of this legendary crew? For obvious reasons, Weevil could be Whitebeard's clone, Bonnie could be Big Mom's clone based on their similar appearances and habits, Blackbeard could be the clone of the man himself, Rock's D. Zebek, and since he was a failed project, it could explain his weird behavior and body. And lastly, Yamato could be Kaido's clone, as his mother was never mentioned. Queen, Kaido's second-in-command, once worked together with Vegapunk, so I guess it's possible he was the one who made Yamato. Zoro will betray Luffy in the end. Before becoming a member of the Straw Hats, Zoro was a famed pirate hunter who was known to go after the pirates with the highest bounty. So, what if the only reason Zoro joined the crew is to help Luffy become the Pirate King so he can cash in on his huge bounty in the end? I mean, think about it. Even after being a pirate for three years, his epithet is still Pirate Hunter. Isn't that a bit weird? The One Piece is inside Luffy. This one is pretty straightforward. The pirate treasures are always marked with an X on maps. So based on this, it makes perfect sense that the X on Luffy's chest marks the place where the One Piece is. Man, I can't believe Roger's great treasure has literally been in front of our noses this whole time. Click on this video, where we rank the top 15 strongest swordsmen in One Piece.